Um, so it, it's kind of happened here. My wife couldn't make it, uh, and my wife, you know, she, she's like uh, at, a, at, a, at a family event, and uh, and she was trying to understand like how important is this thing, and like what kind of goodwill am I, is she gonna burn by not making this, right? So she was like, "What's this? What's this culture shifting thing?" And I was like, "Yeah, you know, it's like a lifetime achievement award kind of sort of like." <laughs> Not, not a big deal. So she, so she went to the website, and she's like, man, I'm missing this Lifetime Achievement Award. God, he's going to hold that against me you know, forever. Uh, and so she notices that Lifetime Achievement Award isn't on the website. Uh, and so, <laughs> but it's, it's fine. I, mean, I, I, I am honored to be mentioned in the same you know, breath as people like Chris and Deidre and Stacy. Uh, they all have the word chief <laughs> in their job title. Uh, I do not. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're literally bosses, like literally, like literally, a boss move. Um, but, but I am, I am the very first venture capitalist to get this award. Don't fact check that. I'm totally making that up. Don't fact check that. I, I, I just need to say that. Uh, otherwise, my joke won't hold. Uh, and so, so I'm going to treat this like the Oscars, right? So rather than give people wisdom and knowledge or an insight, I'm just going to thank a bunch of people. And, uh, and then maybe at the end, kind of tell you a bit about like, how I think about diversity. Um, so first and foremost, I want to thank Andrea and Denmark. Uh, thank you for pulling me into this network, uh, this, this, this amazing mission. Um, you know, thank you for spending time with me and being generous with your introductions. Uh, and, and just thank you for doing this. You know, in 2015, uh, this was, I think that was the first year that, that, that uh, you know, Culture Shifting Labs did this weekend. Uh, and it's just been an amazing uh, event year over year. And uh, congratulations to you all for your fifth anniversary. All right, next, there's a handful of uh, people right here, um, some of my best friends, uh, people who I respect, uh, people who you know, I care deeply about. I mean, you, you all are at the intersection of people who I think are amazing and people who could make it this event. So. <laughs> just, just kidding. Just, just kidding. Um, uh, uh, so some of these folks over here are showing up without socks on. So we're going to pull them aside and talk about the value of socks, uh, even at a Garden Chic event. But anyway, I digress. All right, um, a few more thank yous. I want to thank Ronnie Lott uh, and his wife, Karen. Uh, I want to thank uh, Isaac Vaughn and his wife, Maria. Absolutely. I want to thank um, you know, David Drummond. I want to thank, of course, Ken Coleman and his wife, Caritha. Uh, these people are phenomenal mentors. Uh, I think not just to me. I'm not thinking on behalf of me. I'm thinking on behalf of everyone that you all help, uh, you know, that you all bring up, you know. And, uh, you know, like at, at some point when, you know, uh, this generation of folks, my generation of folks have, have made it, you know, I hope, I hope we're as generous with, with our time and, and our networks as you, as you all have been for us. So thank you again. Appreciate it. And I, I, am, I am the first VC to ever win this award, but there are other VCs of color that I want to point out. And I, I want to, I wanna, and by the way, this won't be everyone. There, I mean, uh, you know, five, five years ago, I would have said that there's only 10 people of color in venture. You know, it turns out there's like 150. I just didn't know them. And I know them now because of culture shifting labs in this weekend. Um, but, ju but just a few names. Uh, Denmark West, uh, Eric Moore, Charles Hudson, Ryan Neese, Marlon Nichols, Frederick Gross, uh, Over at Storm, Chantel Paulson, Teresa Johnson, uh, Chris Lyons, uh, Lindsay Lee, uh, I'm, I'm missing a few, I know, uh, but low Tony, low Tony, spun out Plexo Capital out of GV. Um, we're in it, guys, we were in the game. Like this, this was a, a game that was locked out for many of us for so long, and now we're in it, you know? And uh, I'm, I'm honored to be in a profession with, with you, you people of color, you know, like black folks doing it big. Uh, honored, deeply honored, and thank you for just setting an amazing example. Uh, let's go make some money for our LPs. And my wife is not here, but I'm told this is recorded and she might watch the video. So I, I, I'm going to thank my wife for sure. <laughs> you know, uh, David mentioned we have two young kids at home. I mean, she holds it down. You know, I, I never know what's going on or where I'm supposed to be, but, uh, but she keeps the, the, you know, the train going. She keeps the wheels on. Uh, and, and I couldn't do without her. She, she's an uh, amazing wife, patience, all that kind of good stuff. All the things that I don't have, uh, she, she has an abundance. And so I'm grateful for my better half. Um, love you, babe. We'll get the camera. <laughs> uh, 
All right, uh, so I'm, I'm going to wrap up here. I, I know I don't want to be too long. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit of off-balance sheet stuff about me, and I'll be a little more serious now. Um, so, so, you know, uh, so David, David mentioned my mom was in the Air Force, uh, single-parent mom. You know, I grew up in a, a household where was my mom, my grandma, my grandma was my mom, my mom was like my dad. She was a disciplinarian, like was, put me at attention and, you know, sort of like, you know, tell me. She was a drill instructor in the military, so I, that's what she did. Uh, like, actually, you start yelling at me, I have a natural tendency to just stand at attention. Like, <laughs> like that, that's like my natural tendency. Um, it served me well. Uh, and then I have a younger sister. So I, I grew up in a house of three women. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, like, um, it means a lot to have champions in the audience, right? Like, this is something that's really important to all of us of color, but it's also great that, you know, people like David show up and people like Houston show up. Um, and, you know, it's my commitment to, as a man, show up and use whatever little bit of uh, privilege I have as a man to help women uh, in this profession and to mentor women. <laughs> Uh, and you know, it, it just a little bit more, kind of, kind of on me growing up. Um, you know, my, my mom is white. She she's uh, she grew up in South Carolina, outside of Charleston. Her family's very poor. Um, they're sort of truck drivers and mechanics and farmers. Uh, and they felt a certain way when she married my dad, who's black, right? Like in the 70s. Uh, and you know, it's the 70s. It wasn't that long ago, but um, but but they kind of like disowned her. And there was a time when me and my sister couldn't walk in the house and uh, and you know go to a Thanksgiving dinner uh, because you know the, her, her her sisters and brothers didn't. They felt a certain way about having these mulatto kids, you know, show up and be in front of their friends. Um, but fa fast forward, you know, and, and sorry, and my, my sister was too young to remember that, and I wasn't. So I felt a certain way about that for a long time. Like, I actually held it in my heart, some hatred in my heart around that. And, uh, and fa fast forward kind of 20 years, you know, we, we all break bread together at the same table, right? And I think the, the lesson there is, you know, there, there is a level of just, you got to forgive people. You know, you got to forgive people and give people the space to change and change their views, right? And, uh, and, and they came around long before I did, but I'm just glad ultimately that I was able to come around, right? And, and so I think about, you know, the ways that I might have offended other people, and I, I just hope that they would give me a similar opportunity to atone and to come to the right viewpoint. Uh, and then when I do, to accept me and, and allow me to, to have a role in their lives again. Uh, I, th I think it's a really um, interesting about my family. Um, I'll, I'll bring up uh, kind of one more thing. You know, high, high school... Most of my friends were African American. Uh, you know, I listened to hip hop in you know, the 90s, like you know, Tupac and all that stuff, uh, and, and Afro Man, because I'm from Palmdale. Um, <laughs> shout offline about that. Uh, and, and in college, you know, I joined a black fraternity. Uh, I, I left. You know, I, I think most of the people I was around had a similar view of the world as I did. Uh, when I was in the Navy, I was around you know mostly white people. Uh, most of the officers were white. And uh, they were very conservative. They were Republicans, um, like real Republicans. They have values and like they, uh, you know, believe in like global trade and, you know, and like American exceptionalism. You know, these kind of crazy things. Truth. <laughs> David is cringing right now because he thinks I'm going to like make a further comment. But no, nah, I'm gonna stop there. Don't worry. Um, uh, so anyway, I, 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 I bring that up just to say, like, I, I am grateful that I have been around people with different perspectives, right? And, and like, when you really befriend someone and really give them a chance to be themselves and open up, you know, you, you get to, like, know someone better. Uh, so last thing I'll say, uh, my, my wife is from Kansas, and her family, uh, they, are, they are farmers. <laughs> they, grow, they grow corn and soybean, and they raise cattle. Uh, and, uh, and if you ever go to Kansas, which is a state I think a lot of us don't go to, I, I probably wouldn't go if my <laughs> wife didn't live there. Um, and I go there every Christmas. You know, I, I get to see this, this, this place, right, that has really been left behind, right? Like, you know, like we, we look around this room and what tech has done for all of us and the wealth that's, that it's created, and, um, and we don't get to see the people that it hasn't created wealth for and how they feel and perceive us. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, us in general and us as people of color, you know, who have kind of, kind of benefited from this, right? Um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful that I have that perspective. A uh, quick story on that. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm at home for Christmas, and, uh, you know, I try to, like, get out of my city slicker mode and, like, help around the, around the farm. So, uh, so and by, by the way, I'm, like, allergic to hay, and you feed <laughs> cattle hay. All right? So I'm, like, sneezing all the time, and, like, people, like, trying to stay away from me. Um, but, you know, we're, we're doing, like, you know, like, like farm work, like rough work, like, you know, cows to work. Uh, stuff like, you know, we're like repairing barbed wire fences and like, you know, I don't know, like, oh, we take ice picks and like, you know, pick the frozen over ice so the cattle can drink from the whatever trough or whatever it is. Uh, we, we, you know, we lasso cattle and like tie them up. We, we don't do that. <laughs> we, we actually don't do that. Um, but that'd be cool if we did. Um, so anyway, at the, after the long day of work, right, like we're all, <laughs> I'm, I'm all snot-nosed and sweaty. 
my, my brother's just sweaty. Um, and he's like, hey, let's go grab a beer. And I'm like, okay, cool, let's get a beer. On the way there, you know, he's like, hey, Tyson, uh, you know, just a heads up, like, don't, don't order an IPA. Like, don't, don't, don't do it. And I'm like, that's, that's real, okay. What should, I, what should I order? He's like, well, like, you know, mil, real men around here drink Coors Light. I'm like, really? It's like water. <laughs> like, that's water. Like, okay. uh, what are you talking about? So we walk in the bar, and, uh, and, you know, we sit down behind the bar, and the bartender's back is to us. You know, like, the bar's here, so, you know, he can't really see what I have on. And, uh, and Andy orders, him, my, my brother-in-law, he orders his Coors Light, and then he, he, I, he tells the bartender, hey, bartender, like, what, what, do you, what do you think he wants? So the bartender turns around, and he looks at me, and he's like, and I'm, I'm going to try to do a Midwestern accent. It's going to sound Southern, but it, it is what it is. He's like... Well, let me guess. He's like, <laughs> you got on skinny jeans, and I did have on skinny jeans. You watch CNN, so I'm gonna go grab you an IPA. <laughs> All right. So, so, so why is that story important? Like, what is the message to take from that story? All right. Like, this guy sized me up, right? He sized me up in two seconds. He took one look at me. And I mean, it wasn't that it wasn't accurate, but I felt a certain way about him being able to like, just size me up like that. And I, I thought of two things. One, like, how often am I sizing up every farmer that I come across? And the answer was very often. Right? Like, I, I think I know exactly what they know and want. And you know, I'll, I'll say that everyone in the Midwest is afraid or maybe like, you know, <laughs> whatever, dishonest. Or, um, you know, but, but, it, but it's not fair, right? And so that's the one. And two, like, why don't I, why don't I actively work to like, not adhere to someone else's cliche. Like, what, how can I have some empathy and some understanding of their, their situation that might help me just get greater insight, right? Like, as, as in, in our industry as VCs, like, we should never be surprised by mega trends that are happening. That's our job, right? And the more we can get outside of our bubbles and, 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 and talk to people who aren't like us, the more we don't get blindsided by, by these sort of mega trends. Um, so I think, uh, I, I think that's where I'll stop here. Um, again, wanted to thank Culture Shifting uh, Labs and um, thank Denmark and Andrea for, for amazing work here. Um, I'll, end, I'll end with a, a bit of a quote that I hope summarizes kind of the way I think about this whole thing, which is, um, you know, I think of diversity as a pathway for empathy, you know? And, and, and I think empathy is really what gives us humanity and the thing that kind of makes us human. Um, and so, you know, w when I think about diversity, uh, I, I think about something that enables me to become more human. And with that, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll call my time here, and thank you very much for, uh, for listening to me. Appreciate it.